All right, so if you have gone to lt1swap.com and you've looked up the proper PCM wiring schematics by going to this guy over here, you'll see the, uh, what is it? 98 LS1 F body harness connector pinouts and then the 99 and whatever. You find the one you need, you click on it, it opens it up like so. And then you'll have this kind of weird page and it's it's kind of difficult to read, especially if you have dark mode like I do. So you go up here to the top, usually there's a reader mode and you hit reader mode and it'll do it like this, download these in printable and then boom, you have this now. And you can save this to your hard drive by hitting the download button. Then you'll have these two pages, depending on which vehicle you've selected. Any of the LSs I mess with have the red and blue connector. So out there on the vehicle, the harness itself, where it connects to the PCM, there will be a red connector and there will be a blue connector. Pretty self-explanatory. Also on the back of the connector, I'll add pictures if I can find them online. There will be tiny little numbers that show every single pin as it, you know, it's top left to right and then bottom left to right. So you go through here and you look at each individual pin for each individual connector. I'm going to go through these one by one the way I'm going to be doing this on my vehicle. And I'll give a couple of notes here and there if I can think of anything that may be pertinent like AC, etc. But for the most part, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do on the swap I'm about to do. So we start at pin one on the PCM ground 451 circuit number. That's not important. Wire color black, that is important. So every time you see ground, you're literally just going to run those black wires over to somewhere and just tape them off, tape them together, bunch them together, use zip ties, use bread twist ties. Uh, I like the Dymo sticky labels from like Dollar Tree, because again, they're a dollar for like 100,000 of them or whatever they are. And you literally just wrap it around the wire like a little flag, and then you can write whatever you want on it. All right, 12 volt reference, light green. These are going to be uh, your actual 12 volt constant. So you're gonna need to, again, set these aside, tag them together. All the 12 volts are gonna go to the battery itself. All the grounds are gonna go to the ground on the battery or to the firewall, whatever you wanna do. And then the key on accessories, we'll get to those later. Those are when you turn the key on to tell the computer I'm about to start the engine so everything can prime the fuel pump, etc. All right, fuel injector three control. Obviously we're not gonna to touch that. Two control, not touching it, not used, not used, not used. Uh, gray, five volt reference for the throttle position sensor. Do not damage that wire, obviously. Uh, light blue for the KS, that is the knock sensor signal, number two. Uh, the crank position sensor signal, don't mess with these. Any of these in white, you're literally just not even gonna touch. You don't, you don't wanna break them out of the harness. You don't wanna do anything to them. Dark blue transmission fluid. All right, so now we're getting into these light blues. These you have to make sure you have connected properly. Pink, all right, here's uh, up here I was wrong, 12 volt reference, that's just leave that alone. The black is black, that's PCM ground. Pink is ignition one voltage, that's gonna be a key on. So all the pinks are key on and all the orange go directly to the red on the battery terminal, the positive terminal. I don't know why they didn't make that red. So we have pink is key on, orange is constant 12 volt, and black is our ground. So those are literally the only three wires we will need to hook up to make this system work. The yellows are things you're gonna to wanna to remove if you want to remove them. Here's why I say that. For example, if you're gonna remove the catalytic converters, you don't need the secondary O2 sensor, so you'll see bank two, sensor two, you won't need that one. Uh, bank one, sensor two, you don't need that one. Those are literally just to tell the computer if the cat is working properly or not. However, if you're gonna run headers, the wires are not long enough for the bank one sensor one and the bank two sensor one, which tell the computer how efficient the motor is running and how to adjust the fuel trims to make it run more efficient closer to Lambda. So it's gonna constantly be trying to make adjustments using those number one O2 sensors. If you have headers, 
the wires need to be longer so that the O2 sensors can run down the back of the transmission with the transmission wiring harness and then split off into the O2 sensor bungs at the bottom of the headers, not way up at the exhaust manifold like they were stock. So pin number 25 and pin number 28, you would want to pull these out, literally de-pin them, and there's plenty of videos on how to pull pins out of these connectors without damaging them. Uh, you wanna pull these pins out and use the wiring because they're the same connectors. It even says it on the, the website where you're getting this information from. The white, the tan and the tan and white and the purple and white and the purple, uh, those wires can be removed from these pins and moved over to the pins where the front O2s are coming out, the bank two, sensor one, bank one, sensor one. Uh, anytime you see sensor one, see right here, uh, this purple wire, this purple and white wire, these sensor ones, you want to replace their wiring. So pull this wire out of 26, pull this wire out of 29 and replace it with the wire from 25 and 28. That will give you like a six foot long wire to run anywhere you want down the exhaust, straight pipes, whatever. So you're gonna switch those over. And any of these wires you pull out, save them obviously, because then you have these connectors with these pins on them that you can put in later if you decide to add systems or whatever. We've deleted the this low reference, not needed. You can pull that out. The tan and the tan and white, you're gonna move literally, move 25 over to 26, 28 over to 29. Gray, the crank CPP switch, I forget what that is, but again, not needed gray number 32 pull it out uh this one you obviously see it's blue so it's like do not fuck this up you have to have this tcc brake signal switch and the neutral safety switch signal this is usually coming from your shifter if you have the truck style transmission the shifter uh, select signal will be sent from the park neutral safety switch on the side of the transmission where the uh, where the shift shaft comes out of the side of the tranny itself, it goes through the part neutral safety switch so it can tell where that switch is. Under the Camaro, the F body uh, Corvette, etc., uh, Trans Ams, they didn't have the room under there, so they didn't want to have to uh, drop the tranny to get that piece off the side of the tranny if it failed. So it's actually built into the floor shifter, and it may just be because it wasn't on the column, it was on the floor, so it was easy for them to put it in the floor shifter. but. That shifter, uh, that neutral safety switch package is in the side of the shifter and you will need that to be either intact or replicated somehow so that one, the TCC brake signal, it knows when you're mashing the brake so it reduces the amount of power it's put into the engine and the transmission so it doesn't literally blow things up. And then the neutral safety switch so that it'll start. It knows that you have it in either park or neutral. <clears throat> All right. 35, not used, black, fuel injector control one, yellow and black fuel injector, again, you're not touching any of these black, see ground, you're gonna wanna put that with your black ground up here, PCM ground. Now we're over here at 41, not used. Dark green, low speed cooling fan relay control. If you reuse the fuse box and relay box from the under hood switch, uh, from the underhood fuse panel, then you'll have these circuits already and you can just reutilize them. But this is for when uh, the computer commands low speed fan, though I'll have a whole wiring section on that later when we're actually wiring up the fans. So if you have questions, look out for that video. Five volt reference for the AC refrigerant pressure sensor and the five volt reference for the fuel tank pressure sensor and five volt reference for EGR. You're not gonna need those, okay. The uh, five volt reference for AC refrigerant pressure sensor, I believe, again, we'll go over this later when I'm showing how to wire up either AC or using the AC compressor for onboard air. It will bring the idle up because it thinks the AC is working and therefore the AC will kick on. Low reference, refrigny, that's misspelled. Transmission temperature sensor, obviously you won't need that if you're running a manual, but we're running automatic. Uh, EGR Pintle, we're not using EGR, it's the exhaust gas recirculation system. It's just for emissions that start up because your car doesn't run very efficiently at startup until it becomes closed loop. Uh, it's a failing system. It's probably 20 years old by now. Mine is, so I'm definitely deleting it, but it's just a, a potential exhaust and intake leak. All right, battery positive voltage, again, orange. That's going to go straight to the battery with the other 
battery positive over here, number 20. And then we got dark green, ECM, PCM, BCM, class two serial data. So that is, I believe, one of the wires that goes to your OBD2 port underneath the dash so that you can check your codes. You can flash your HP tuners to do things in the computer, whatever you wanna do. Then we're down here at the other O2 bank. And like I said before, take out 65 and 66 and put the 65 wire into the 66 port. That'll give you the longer bank two sensor two wire for bank two sensor one. Same thing here at 68, 69, just switch them. Oil level switch signal. There's an oil level sensor on the side of the oil pan, and it tells you if your oil level's low. If you're not gonna have a light on the dash to light up, then there's no point in having this level switch. You can literally just unplug it from the side of the oil pan and leave it in there. You don't have to pull it. Uh, it'll remain a plug like it should. And then later, if you do run a turbo, you can remove that and use it as a drain for the turbo oiling. You're welcome. Brown and white, CMP sensor, ECT sensor. Again, white, don't touch any of these. All right, and then we go down to the red connector. Now, same thing, black right off the top, ground. Hook that to all the blacks. Brown TCC solenoid output. Torque converter clutch solenoid. So that's part of the trans wiring. You're not gonna touch that. Air injection reaction solenoid. So there's an air pump again, kind of like the EGR system where it's running exhaust gas back into the intake to burn it. There's also an air injection system for certain cold climates where it's gonna inject cold air into the intake, blah, blah, blah. We don't need it. So there's a huge air pump behind the headlight on a Camaro. That's gonna be deleted anyway. I leave them in the car, I don't even pull them. They're that unimportant. Fuel pump relay control primary. This is the wire that goes out to the fuel pump relay again if, if you reuse the fuse boxes under the hood you're not going to need to worry about this but if you're going to set up your own relays and fuses and blah 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 this wire would come out from the computer through a fuse and then to the relay to tell the relay to send power to the fuel pump high power engine speed signal this is the wire that will go to your digital or programmable speedometer whatever or if you use the original dash from the camaro this is the white wire that goes to the back of the uh, speedo itself to tell the speed white cruise control uh, 13 on the red connector if you want to install a cruise control module from a junkyard or whatever or the donor car you're going to need that wire there that is the engage signal that normally when you tell it to go into cruise control that tells the computer to start using the cruise control module to regulate the gas pedal so again i leave this wire in because later on i do add cruise control when i have the time and the parts uh, red and black ac refrigerant pressure sensor signal this one will be important if you're trying to engage an ac compressor to either run an ac or power the ac compressor to fill up the air tank for airbags so leave that wire generator turn on signal that's for your alternator ac request signal that's you requesting ac so whenever your tank gets too low in the back this wire would be tripped and it'll tell the ac to kick on or rather the idle to increase and then the ac compressor starts compressing sending air into the tank this is the ac compressor clutch supply voltage obviously this goes right to the ac compressor clutch but i always again run this to a fuse and then to a relay and then the relay sends high power straight from the battery right to the ac compressor clutch so i don't burn up a wire or the computer itself vss low vss high these are all for again uh speed signal throttle position sensor intake air temperature sensor uh fuel enable control you're not going to be using fuel enable so you can delete that that is uh like an evap system as you can see down here dark green and white number 34 high speed cooling fan relay as we talked about earlier there's a low speed and a high speed high speed will kick on whenever the ac is engaged or whenever you go to the secondary temperature in your hp tuner setting you'll see 190 is the low speed kick on and 200 is the high speed kick on you can change that in the settings obviously but this is the wire that goes out to the relays to tell the fans to do that evap canister purge solenoid just like up here fuel enable control it's just part of the evap system you should have deleted that anyway it's a potential leak air pump relay that's again for the air pump system and cruise control inhibit you're going to want to keep that wire again that's part of the cruise control system so if you're going to install it later leave the wiring it makes it super easy ground put the grounds together get it all right 
Back at the top of the red, we've got gray for the EGR, don't care. The torque converter clutch solenoid valve control, again, part of the transmission wiring. AC clutch relay control. We want to keep that wire. Again, if we're going to use AC or the compressor to power our tank later, we're going to need it. Reverse lockout solenoid. I'm not sure why this is highlighted green, but I'm pretty sure you need it. It's part of the trans wiring. Uh, it's white here, so don't delete it. Uh, we got EVAP canister again, delete that. Mill control. This is the actual malfunction indicator lamp control. So that's going to go to your OBD2 port for connection. VSS signal, that's the wire again going to your speedometer itself. Ignition retard signal, fuel level sensor signal, both can be deleted because we're not messing with any of that. Fuel tank pressure sensor signal, delete that. And then that's it. Everything's done at that point. You can literally close the harness back up, tape everything back together, connect all these blacks to the negative, connect all the oranges to the positive, and then connect the pink to a switch or a key on or whatever. And then you will have, I believe it's a fat purple wire for the starter that is a separate harness. If you took the entire underhood harness, you'll have the wiring bundle for the starter and the starter relay and all that stuff. And then you literally just trip that starter wire with a push button and she'll fire. You obviously have to have VATS, that is the vehicle anti-theft system deleted in HP tuners. If you don't have HP tuners, that'll probably be the next video I'm gonna make. Comment below if you have any questions, like if you like, subscribe if you wanna see more. And as always guys, keep on modding. Oh yeah. You like it?